The big question is this, how does an overweight introvert that was raised in a drug house become a successful entrepreneur and dominate the real estate conversation online? One relationship at a time. You were listening to The Mighty Mike Show. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of the Mighty Agent Podcast. I am also streaming live on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Uh, maybe except for TikTok, which I'll start doing here as soon as I get to a thousand followers. You can follow me on all social media channels at Mighty Mike read. Okay, guys, listen, I'm here in the beautiful New Mexico. I got this great view. I wish you guys could see it of the mountain. It's got snow. It snowed this morning. And if I'm, if <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't say like, you know what, I'm kind of getting this nostalgia that like Christmas is here, almost here. I know Thanksgiving hasn't even come yet, but I'm sitting here thinking we are going to be opening up presents before you know it. So super excited. The weather, I'm not used to the cold. I got to admit, being in Florida the last few years, but I'm sitting here um, looking out here at this beautiful side of all this snow and I'm just, it's pretty cool. So let's dive right into some content. So today, uh, one of the things that I really just has always stayed with me with real estate is lead listings and leverage, which is, there was a book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, written by Gary Keller, Keller Williams, right? And uh, credit is due. The book is amazing. Um, there's so many parts that I could go into that I would say that I disagree with and things like that, but I want to give credit where credit's due and just focus on the really good things and then where I took it to the next level. And he actually took it to the next level too, and we're going to dive into that here today. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, please go leave us a review, leave me a review and let me know how, how I'm doing, what kind of content you'd love to hear that you're not hearing already. And of course, if you're on the YouTube channel, you guys know I'm a marketing, just, I love marketing. I'm an addict to marketing, all things marketing and automation. So if you, you know, you could browse through the other uh, videos on there and learn all about how to automate your uh, real estate company or really any company. I have a few different businesses and I, I talk about all of that on the YouTube channel, Mighty Mike Reed or the Mighty Mike Show, however you want to call it on YouTube. So, okay, so let's dive into the first thing, listings. Now, one of the reasons why listings are so powerful and Gary talks about this in the book is that listings are, because you could focus on buyers, who people who are trying to find homes, or you can focus on listings. Or, and there's so many different ways in real estate to, to go about like what you want to put your focus on. But if you put your focus on the listings, everything else will come. And the reason why is because the listings are what people are trying to buy, right? It's, I always love to bring it back to cars, you know, it's like, you know, you, you, you don't go out and market for people who are trying cars, right? If you're a car salesman, you work at a car dealership where the cars are. So if you, if you apply that to real estate, you need to be a, you need to find the dealership, AKA the neighborhood that you're going to farm so that you can uh, control the listings. And there's a whole bunch of different ways to do that. I have a six day challenge. It's absolutely free in the mighty agent community where you can actually go day by day. If you're a brand new agent and you will get a closing within 30 days, if you go through through that six day challenge, I basically walk you through what I did, what I in the first six months where I learned and I saw other people, what they did is essentially go out there and, and find who already has listings, right? Like the listing agents and then ha and then partner with them essentially to do open houses for them and, and get so much on their good side and help them look like a rock star that they're calling you. Hey, do you mind doing an open house this weekend? Hey, do you mind, uh, taking, you know, showing this listing for me or whatever, right? And by partnering with those people who already have the listings, I call them the rainmakers, right? Then you can get a jump start as if, you know, and then you learn also how they're doing it, how they're listing the homes, the homes are selling for in those neighborhoods. You start getting belly to belly with people who are actually interested in buying selling homes. That's the first thing, you know, 
and a lot of the things I teach about, I teach about um, like how to communicate with buyers, how to use marketing to attract buyers. And in this market where we're going, this is very important, but it still doesn't change the fact that listings is the inventory. The listing is the inventory. So if you can focus on getting listings while helping buyers, it all kind of like becomes this, you know, cyclical effect that helps you. Okay. So we'll come back to that in a second, but leads. So if you take the second thing, which is leads, he talks about in the book, finding leads is like, I, I don't even think I'd want to say like even to focus on leads, you know, leads really, instead of focusing on leads, cause that's really a marketing term for getting somebody in your pipeline and trying to call them and call them and see if they want to buy or whatever, and keep trying to send them listings or whatever. I think you're better off instead of focusing on leads, focusing on building your sphere, building your network, building your referral partner system of other agents and other parts. Cause like, for example, if you're in Orlando, right. There's different softwares you can use. I'll, I'll mention a couple, but you know, if you're in Orlando, you can find where people are moving from to Orlando or some other place, right? A destination type of area. You can find out where people are moving from. Then you can look for people or brokerage that live in that city. And you can tell them, Hey, I'm looking, you know, I'm getting, or I'm hoping to get uh, a lot of uh, referrals from that city. And I was just curious, do you have anybody that's ever moving? I, I'm telling you right now, I did this and I interviewed and I interviewed today people who move, who um, send referrals all over the country. There's one girl named Tracy Hall and she's over in, uh, I think, New Jersey area, Rhode Island, so, somewhere over there. She sends me a card all the time. You know, she's like, she sends, she gets listings and the people are moving from up north where it's cold down to Orlando. And so she sends me referrals and we're like referral partners, but she is like a networking genius. And this is how, this is what I'm saying. So instead of focusing on list on leads, right, you're all just focused on listings and building relationships with other realtors and other referral partners. Like, um, like there's different niches, right? And I get into this in that six day, in that six day course at the mighty agent community.com. You can check it out. But the, the third thing that he talks about in his book is leverage, all right? Once you've figured out how to get listings, how to get leads, right? How to network with other people, how to build your sphere, then you want to figure out how to build a team. The third and probably most important one in his book he talks about is leverage. It's like you can learn how to cold call. You can learn how to build a brand for yourself. But if you can't duplicate yourself, you're never going to grow to that next level where, where it just like blows. And so, and this is so true. Because when I was doing it on my own and I was getting lots of different things, it was like, I was trying to go show a house one minute and it's like, I'm paying for some of these leads. And then I'm over here trying to do a listing and my, my sellers are calling like, and you're just so split. Right. And so what you want to do is you want to find an, uh, people who, and the best way to do this when you first start is to find people who um, are focused on that other thing that you don't want to do. Right. There's tons of great buyers agents out there that don't want to list houses and don't and don't have money to put into doing ads or sending out mailers. They don't want to cold call. Right. This is all this kind of stuff you do as a, like a rainmaker. Right. So and I'm generalizing a little bit, but this is what I've seen. OK. And uh, but then the, the flip side is true. You know, maybe you 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 don't want to show houses, but you're OK automating things and cold calling and you have a little bit of money to spend on mailers to send out to the neighborhood about the the open house that's coming up and all this kind of stuff right and so so figuring out who you want to partner with right that's why i said in the beginning you don't have listings so the best opportunity for you is to actually go out there as a buyer's agent offer to do open houses for listing agents and the listing agents will give you their listing essentially and in the course, I actually live cold called a uh, listing agent and asked him if I could do an open house. And I, and I recorded it, put it in the course. You can hear her say like, absolutely. Yes, please do an open house. She told me the issues that were going on with it. The reason why it hadn't sold yet, that it had solar panels on there that were, um, that weren't working properly. And so they're having trouble selling the house, which if you know about solar panels and you understand you know, how the different ways to get those panels paid off, you can actually just uh, negotiate.
associated credit at close. So you see what I'm saying? Like the more knowledge you have about real estate and about transactions and about how to solve problems, you can actually make it work. So she's a listing agent. I don't know if that's her only listing. I just called her out of the blue because it was in the right price range around 400,000, right? But what you want to do is find properties that are like close to you somehow. Ideally in your uh, farm area, if you're trying to farm a certain area, try to do an open house on every single listing in that farm area. And you'll just become known as the local agent. Like you just do that every single month, do two, at least two open houses a month, and you'll be surprised how much you're getting. So it's pretty cool. Okay. And the fourth thing, and then I'm going to come back and do a little review here. The fourth thing is something I added. It's like, once you're doing the listings and you're getting, you know, you're, you got these listings, you're getting a lot of, there's a few things that are happening when you have listings. I'm going to go through that real quick. When you have a bunch of listings, um, yes, you have, li you have sellers that are calling and they want updates, right? You got to You have to proactively call them and update them. Even if there really is no update, depending on the market, <clears throat> the market just a year ago, the update should be every week and the update should be, um, we have four offers right? or 10 offers, 20 offers, but now with the market shifting a little bit, you're going to get, you're, you're going to have to be used to saying more than just, maybe we should lower the price, right? You got to be more creative. So that's a, that's for another video. But for today, if you have a listing, you are the person that calls from other buyers agents wanting to show your listing. You are the person who is responsible for making sure an open house happens, right? That this doesn't sit on the market forever, right? Maybe an open house every weekend or maybe every day, right? Like I'm not opposed to that. If you get a really good listing and you feel like the price is really good and you want to really just knock it out of the park for a real estate investor who has a whole bunch of other listings they might give you, go set up shop. If it's vacant, go set up shop in that listing and do an open house every freaking day. You want to see how many crazy leads you get coming in. Maybe not. They're all qualified, but you want to see how many leads you'll get just to have having your open house every single day of the week. If they, if they approve it, there's no reason why you can't do it. I've, I've done it. I've done it for a week straight, stayed in an open house that would not sell the listing that would not sell. Um, and it was just because it had an illegal addition on the property. So nobody wanted it. They wanted to tear down the addition or they wanted a discount to get it permitted and stuff like that. And he wasn't one of the budge. So we ended up negotiating with his partner and he actually ended up keeping the house, paying off his partner. And now the property is even worth like another 40% more than it was when we were trying to sell it. So he actually, he actually won big time on that deal. So, so listings, you have all these people calling, you have all this traffic coming in without you doing anything. This is the powerful thing. So when you have these listings, okay? So now how can you automate things in a way that will bring you leads? So there's a few different things and they talk about them in the book. They talk about it all online. You could search how to get leads with your listing, okay? But a sign in the yard, okay? You have to put a sign in every yard. Some communities don't allow it, so you got to be careful. But pretty much every normal residence, home, where there's a home being sold, you can actually put a sign in the yard, this is so powerful. It has your phone number and there's a few different tools. One of my favorites is called CallRail. And CallRail will actually allow you to pick a different phone number and label that phone number. They're, they're not a sponsor of my show or anything, but CallRail will actually, you can have a different phone number for every lead type. Okay. So if we're talking marketing, you need to know what lead type is the most effective. And so wherever you're, if you're doing a mailer, like a card mailer, it needs to be a different phone number for every campaign you send out. There should be a different phone number on call rail. That way you could go back and see how, when we sent out these mailers, how many people called off of these mailers. Now the phone numbers will all go to your phone or to wherever you want you call center, whatever you want to do. Right? There's a bunch of them. There's a great software called call Porter, real estate specific, again, not a sponsor, um, but it's a great service for real estate investors, but I know they do it for real estate agents too. So, so you put a phone number and call rail for every type of marketing that you're doing so that you can see what type of marketing is most effective for your particular um, market, right? Because some markets, you know, bandit signs, like putting just signs everywhere on the, uh, all over the neighborhood 
could be the most effective way to market yourself or to your listings. And, you know, doing Google pay-per-click ads could be the best way. And so you want to find out what the best way is, the greatest return on your investment so that you can get the best leads so that you can cut out all the other forms of marketing that aren't giving you nearly close the return on your investment and then double and triple down on that one that is working the best. Guys, this is marketing 101. When you create a Google ad or a Facebook ad, you essentially create five to 10 ads and you, they compete against each other. And then after about a week, two weeks, you, you know, you're watching it every day, seeing what the pay-per-click is. And it tells you how many, how many cents uh, per view, how many cents per click, how many cents per impression, depending on when they call something different. But the idea is that you get uh, more for your money, right? You get more impressions, more views for your money. And then how many people are actually clicking on it? Now with this, we're talking about getting people into your sphere. We actually want to have them call us directly. If you're an individual agent, and you're just looking for leads, buyer leads off of that listing, you want to actually have them call you so you can answer the phone so that you can make a personal connection with them, right? If you were trying to sell, you have to be the salesperson. You have to be the person that says, hey, this is Mighty Mike in Orlando. How you doing? You know, or Mighty Mike helps you buy it right and sell without a fight. How you doing? Yeah, something fun and engaging gets people to kind of laugh or, or just kind of be like, this guy is silly or, or whatever your brand is, that's my brand, right? So get there and, and, and do that and then create the different phone numbers, attach them to different labels so you know what the marketing type was. And then what you're going to start to find is, because <clears throat> you got to test it, right? And I can tell you uh, for the market in Orlando, the, the most effective strategy was for me to open houses and to have people come in and have that face-to-face -face with me where I could ask them the questions that you ask every lead. Do you know your credit? Money for a down payment, right? I could do a whole video on that. Those three questions are the most important ones. And you, and you ask them just like that because you don't want to say, what's your credit? You don't want to get in trouble for different, different laws and stuff that, you know. I mean, some people can't ask that. But like as a realtor, you want to be very careful, you know, stay in your lane, right? So you want to get them with your mortgage partner. But if you say, do you know your credit? And they say, and they say, no, do you know right away that it's bad? Nine times out of 10, they say they don't know their credit. It's bad. So you say, not a problem. Let me get you with my uh, mortgage partner. He's like, he'll actually get you pre-qualified. Now, what happens is you get people to come into open houses. They're hanging out with you. If you're personable and you sell yourself right there in the, in the, um, in the open house, you have an opportunity to build someone in your network, in your sphere. So many people get focused on like they want it to be transactional right? They want it to be like, boom, you hit my link. You came to my page. You, uh, you got a house. I'm sending you houses. I'm spamming you houses that you don't even want, right? So that you'll hopefully put an offer in on one and that will work. You, it will work. You know, you know, two out of 10 will go ahead and submit an offer because that's why they initially found you because they were searching for homes, right? But two out of 10 is not a good, not a good average for what we're talking about. You know, what you want to do is you want to create relationships with people so that when they call you, you don't say, hey, you ready to buy a house? You say, oh, hey, how's it going? Long time no see. How you been? Right. It's a relationship. Real estate is a relationship business. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Before I got into real estate, all the businesses I had been in, I did not see them as re relationship business businesses. I did see them as transactional businesses, whether it was a PI company otherwise known as process serving. That's how I got started was as a process server and the, the clients were attorneys, right? And so it was like, if I get enough paralegals to send me work, they just want me to serve it, right? Serve the papers. Uh, the next one was marketing. They, they were relationships, but they just wanted, they wanted more business. And if they didn't get more business, they were not happy. So it was not really, didn't feel like a relationship business. Real estate is very much husband and wife looking to go buy a house in whatever fashion that is, or whoever it is, and you were, it's this like whole experience that they want to, that they want to go through. And if they choose you, it's because they think that you're going to provide that experience for them and that they can trust you. Okay. I actually like to go into it. And this is going to be good and bad. Okay. For some people, I like to actually throw that aside and say, 
that's a great business model for someone to do that. And honestly, that is majority of business. So if that's what you want to do, go for it. And I definitely teach you how to do that. That was my first year in business. That's what I did. But I actually prefer the models that allow you to have more automation, that allow you to not have to go into homes, that allow you to go in on Zoom and, and list homes and get business. That's what I actually prefer. And that's what I mastered. Okay. And so the last and the fourth pillar that's talking about, you got listings, leads, leverage, and real estate investing. This is so powerful. And, and Gary Keller actually gets to this in his next book that he wrote, which is the millionaire real estate investor, right? Because at first it was just millionaire real estate agent. You're making all this money. What do you do with it? The reality is when I, when I went out there and made all that money and I, as a real estate agent in Orlando, it's like, you got these, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you just, if you don't spend it on something that is a liability, according to the government, that has a tax benefit to yourself, you're going to give most of it away. Like no joke out of hundred thousand dollars, you're going to give away 50 or 60. Okay. Because you're going to enter a different tax bracket. So one thing that people don't realize, you know, especially like if it's your first or second year, the, the biggest thing that people get in trouble with in real estate is taxes. So learning how to invest in real estate, learning what the invest, investment options are, whether it's syndications, whether it's REITs or, or even finding your own real estate deals. That's the, the most lucrative way of doing it. But if you've created this engine as a real estate agent, that's producing lots of income. Okay. You don't want to take a break from that. You want to focus on that and then find ways to passively invest. There's so many different ways you can, I'm constantly finding good deals. That's obviously one of the reasons for the show um, is, you know, basically help you guys be successful and then join me in investing in large multifamily uh, investment properties and in deals. And so I'm not sharing any of those legally. I can't share any of the deals I'm looking at or investing in uh, yet, but that's my goal. Okay. So if you guys are interested in investing with me, you guys can definitely reach out. Um, but it would definitely be like a partnership kind of deal until we get the approval to have um, investors on board and get all legal and legit with that. So guys, this is it. Listings, leads, leverage, and real estate investing. If you can do that, I mean, and you set up systems in place, I mean, you can just live a free life. You know, you can, you can be free to, I mean, I'm here in New Mexico right now. I got negotiating deals from afar, right? I got people who are helping me over there. I have a team over there. I have a team here. We're launching a new solar division to a company that is just taking off. And so the the world is your oyster okay understand what it is you got to do the systems you got to put in place the automation that you have to use and things will just start to flourish for you i hope this is helpful you guys i hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, we will see you guys on the next episode listen go out there live a mighty life take mighty action and forge your future of fortune and abundance for you and your family i'll see you guys on the next episode Mighty Nation, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I put my heart and soul into creating this show and specifically covering topics that I think are going to help you move the needle forward in your business and in your life and help you forge a future of fortune and abundance for you and your family and be able to go out there and just take action on all the wonderful things and dreams and hopes and things that you want to accomplish. Subscribe to the channel, leave a review, share this with a friend, and until next time, live mighty.